Okay, hello everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Udesh Soman. Uh, is my screen visible? Hello? Yes, yes, visible. Very much visible. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to start with LSTM, uh, which we have covered in previous lecture. I'll just go through a few uh, brief details of LSTM and its coding, and then we'll move to uh, text, uh, text processing. So here we have LSTM, the simple structure of LSTM, a single unit of LSTM. LSTM stands for long short term memory. So we uh, in LSTM, we have both long term memory and short term memory that is created from previ uh, previous sequences. And uh, those uh, that is used to uh, actually pre uh, pre make a prediction on the whole sequence by remembering the result of previous sequence or previous uh, Sample. So I'm skipping right ahead to the bidirectional LSTM that we are going to use today. In bidirectional LSTM, actually, we have two separate layers of LSTM one which propagates in uh, one direction, left to right, and the other one that propagates information in uh, other direction, right to left. And the result of these two uh, processings are combined together and then we apply uh, our we apply our fun, uh, final function on that activation function either softmax for multi classes for single classes sigmoid or binary classes sigmoid and then we compare it with actual class and then we hence we get the cross entropy that is the simple working of the bidirectional lstm so we'll skip right ahead to the model preparation so here we have First of all, for creating any Keras model, for creating any model using Keras library, we need the sequential model. What sequential model does is actually a kind of list of integrated layers. So we initiate this as a sequential model. We add, first of all, we need to add the embedding layer. Why do we need to need, uh, add the embedding layer? Because if you see here, our input is of our input is two dimensional vector of type uh, 5, uh, 5, 52,165 samples and 100 dimensions. These 100 dimensions are actually uh, the length of sentence. So, in order to uh, create uh, our samples out of this, because a uh, bi direct LSTM model takes a num uh, number of samples. And uh, with the input of uh, LSTM model is number of samples, then timestamps means the length of your sequence, and then the dimensions. Hence, to uh, get uh, the 3D vector for our LSTM input, we need to add this embedding layer. So simply we put our input dimensions, means vocabulary size, number of words we have, output dimensions, embedding size here, output dimension, is the length of sentence input length so max sequence length that is possible in our uh, data set and then weights embedding weights embedding weights are already uh, available in word to vector and then trainable is equal to two, which means we can train this embedding layer as well instead of uh, just going with the pre uh, 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 already available weights, we can train our embedding layer as well. Now, next we need to add LSTM model. So we uh, first we add the bi-directional object and inside it, LSTM model. We uh, Right now we are using 64 LSTM neurons and return sequence is true, which means we can add more LSTM layers or we can add more uh, more LSTM or time directional, any other kind of layers. And then finally, time distributed because actually we are using timestamps and our, uh, we have sentences of particular length ra rather than single sample. So time distributed inside which uh, we add the dense layer, num classes because this one is actually the output layer. So number of classes we have. So if you remember from our uh, previous processing, we are dealing with nouns, pronouns, verbs. So they are, uh, they are actually part of speeches. 
and part, uh, we uh, here we have actually uh, 13 parts of speeches. So dumb classes would be 13 and activation softmax. Activation function actually takes in uh, the file. No, it's a function to convert our vectors into uh, probabilities. Whatever we get as a result of all pro all this processing, that is converted into probability. So uh, when we have multi-class function, we use softmax. So now in the next step, we compile the models. All these layers that we have discussed earlier are actually compiled. Any loss in our prediction is calculated using categorical cross entropy. Categorical cross entropy is summation of all the losses and we log, we take log of all the losses. Whatever the losses we have, loss means if the prediction, uh, prediction is one and our probability is 0.5, then the loss would be 0.5. So uh, prediction, uh, prediction class minus probability, predicted probability. That is our loss. We sum the loss. Uh, we add the losses all over the data set and we take log of those losses. That is categorical cross entropy. Optimizer function. Since we need to change our weights in each epoch, we need to uh, update our weight to get uh, to get the best result. Hence, we use the Adam optimizer. There are multiple optimizers available. Adam is one of the most common optimizers that is used. Uh, also, uh, if you are familiar with hyperparameter tuning, you can try out multiple optimizers and select the best for your given data set. And matrices is actually how we are, uh, what is the uh, our calculation of model performance. So for that, here we are using accuracy. There are multiple uh, matrices available in Keras. So you'll have to check that out. Uh, on Keras website. Obviously, all these uh, the uh, detailed description of all these layers, their input, uh, their input parameters, and any settings that are available for your model, all are available in Keras documentation. You can check them out uh, at Keras. So after compilation, we can check the summary. Of course, we here we have this embedding layer with hundred times 300 because if you remember uh, we when we saw the word two vector and we uh, we found the vector of any word that was a 300 dimension vector a vector of uh, dimension 300 so that's why 300 100 is the length of our sentence each single sentence is of length 100 even if uh, if x words then certain null values or zeros are embedded. Uh, again, we have seen this previously. Uh, we have done this manually. Embedding does the same thing, but in an intelligent way. And the final layer, time distributed, it has 100 by 13. So 13 is actually number of classes that we are going to predict. That's why 13. 100, again, the length of sentence. Then it is simple. We just uh, call the fit pin on it. We uh, we pass our training set and uh, training set target our target set means y train batch size batch size is uh, how uh, how many samples should there be in each batch each uh, each epoch will have number of batches that will be calculated by according to your batch size if you do not pass batch size it will take the whole uh, whole lot or your whole data set as a single batch. Otherwise, 128, so number of batches will be your uh, the size of data set divided by batch size. That will be a number of batches. So that many batches will be in each epoch. So here, around 408 batches, each of size 128. Epochs 10, we are keeping epochs 10 for now. We can increase and if we uh, run into overfitting or the uh, things like that, we can just add an early stopping variable. So in case there is no upgradation or the, uh, there is no new learning, there is no increase in accuracy or all, all that, uh, it will stop early stopping. Here we are only using 10 equal, no need. And validation data, validation data we have already uh, 
kept some part of data aside that part of data ends up at validation data so model trains on this x train and y train and checks the result on x validation and y validation so after uh, all this training we get our model we can plot the result or output of this model is actually a history object so from that history object we can uh, check the history history of accuracy versus validation accuracy and plotting these values we get our model accuracy so we have already seen this pretty good uh, performance and we evaluate it on the another set x test and y test something we have uh, this this part of data we have kept entirely separated from the whole training process training and validation process as well so now we check uh, accuracy on that so here we get losses some 0 0.02 and accuracy 99 so overall our model is good that was bidirectional lstm with you know, particular details of the layers uh, if anyone has any difficulties or want to know about any thing any anything.